Okay, have you ever thought about adjusting exposure in post? I mean, I'm serious. How do you do it and which wheel should you use and does it even work? Before jumping in, this video will deal with log encoded footage only. It doesn't matter whether it's S-log, C-log, V-log or anything else. The principles apply to all flavors of log encoding. If you're shooting in HLG, Hybrid Log Gamma, you can try the same method I'm about to show you, but your mileage may vary. In general, it should work though. If you're shooting in anything other than log, Rec. 709 for example, this method will not apply. Regular Rec. 709 footage just does not have enough latitude. Log footage allows for that kind of freedom because log encoding fundamentally means packing more brightness information into a given file. As you know, log footage needs to be transformed to Rec. 709 to become properly viewable, otherwise it will look very washed out. I don't want to weigh this video down with technicalities, so you only need to keep in mind that log footage has more information in its initial state than when it's converted to Rec. 709. Okay, but what is exposure actually? Exposure is defined as the amount of light per unit area. To keep things simple, today we just say that exposure is the amount of light your camera captures. Generally speaking, the more light you capture, the brighter your image becomes. Let's imagine I want to photograph a black and white gradient, like this. I need a black and white gradient and a camera. If it's exposed correctly, black should correspond to black and white should correspond to white. If I now increase the exposure, the bright parts become brighter and maybe even clipped or blown out. Simultaneously, the black parts or the dark parts of the image become brighter as well. This means adjusting the exposure moves all brightness parts of an image, like this. Unfortunately though, it is not as simple as that. You can see I have two brackets here, one with proper exposure and one with the dynamic range limit. Some cameras might have a different highlight roll off, other cameras have more or less dynamic range or just treat the image differently in general. Okay, but what do we make of that now? Properly adjusting the exposure in post means that we need to somehow achieve the effects that would have happened in camera with a given camera's color science. And in camera is quite a crucial keyword here. Exposure happens in camera and only in camera. However, when shooting with log encoding, we can mimic the effects of adjusting exposure in post. But this only works as long as we know how to properly set up our signal chain. Before we take care of our signal chain, we should know the tools we're using. To really understand what the color wheels do, I have pulled up a black and white gradient. So let's apply an instance of color wheels. We jump in there and have a look. First and foremost, we have a look at the global wheel. If I move it up, the entire gradient moves up, and if I move it down, the entire gradient moves down. Since the information is clipped at just under zero and just above 100, I want to lower the contrast to make this a little bit more visible. I apply my contrast plugin, move this before the color wheels, disable the color wheels, and just decrease the contrast. If I now go back to the color wheels, reset the global wheel and adjust it again, you can see that indeed everything moves up or everything moves down. Let's get rid of the contrast plugin. Next, let's reset the global wheel again and move the shadows wheel. If I decrease it, you can see how the black point moves. If I increase it, you can see how the black point moves up. Pay attention to how the white point here stays in place. So again, reset this, I move this down and up, but the white point stays in place. Let's reset this. Next, let's go to the highlights wheel. If I increase the highlights, you can see how the white point moves. If I decrease the highlights, you can see how the white point moves down. If we pay attention to the Luma waveform, this is just the same as before with the shadows wheel, but this time the black point stays in place here. Again, I reset this and move it up and pay attention to the black point. Move it up and move it down, but the black point stays in place. Okay, let's reset this. Last but not least, the midtones wheel. If I start pushing it up, you can see how the white point stays in place and the black point stays mostly in place. However, this time the change is not linear because you can see the graph curves. Let's get rid of my drawings here. Now I will push the midtones down. And again, the black point and the white point stay in place, but the line curves. This is pretty much everything you need to know about the color wheels. The global wheel moves the entire signal up and down the shadows wheel moves the black point, the highlights wheel moves the white point, and the midtones wheel adjusts the midtones or the gamma. In other softwares like DaVinci Resolve, these wheels are called 
offset, lift, gamma and gain. And I think you can now see where this terminology comes from. As with all things color grading, the correct order of operations is crucial. However, for the sake of this video, I will not delve into this in detail. If you want to learn more about the signal chain and the order of operations, I have a two hour training on my website you can check out, or you can download a free guide I wrote, both are linked in the video description. So for now, you just have to take my word for it. When grading log footage, you should always use the proper color space transformation LUT to Rec. 709. If your signal chain hierarchy and your order of operations are correct, using a transformation LUT has no drawbacks at all and is, in my opinion, the far superior way to doing it manually. But this would be a topic for another video. To show you what I mean, let's jump to an actual example. This shot was shot in SLOG3 as Gamma3.cine. Let's have a look at the inspector. With the proper color space transformation LUT applied, you should perform all corrections before the LUT. Since the video signal flows through the inspector from top to bottom, you must put the adjustments above the LUT in the inspector. This means this adjustment is processed before the LUT. Again, if we follow the video signal from top to bottom, it will get processed by the color wheels and then into the LUT. To rearrange the effect order, just drag and drop them. Okay, okay, but why does this even matter? Let's disable everything. As you can see, log footage is quite flat. That means if I go into the color wheels and enable them, we can move the video signal up or down without clipping, without losing any information. And you can see how much room we have to move the signal. Again, I can move it up here or down here and everything will be preserved. And since we want to move the entire signal, the answer to the question which wheel you should use to adjust the exposure is clearly the global wheel or the offset wheel. Because again, you want to move the entire signal. As we discussed in the beginning, if you adjust the exposure, all brightness values of an image are affected. We can push it between 0 and 100 and sure enough, we can move our entire signal. We perform this correction before the LUT because the LUT expects a certain range of input values. If I now go into the color wheels and push the signal up, you can see for one how everything stays within bounds and if you pay attention to the vector scope as well, Maybe I make this even a little bit bigger so you can see it better. You can see how the colors react to the shifts in exposure. Not only do they become more or less saturated, they actually shift in hue a little bit. This is because the color space transformation LUT takes care of the actual color science. If we adjust the signal before the LUT, the LUT works with the given input values and arranges them accordingly. Again, if I push it up, not only does the brightness of the image change, also the handling of the colors change. And if I push it down, you can see how everything falls into place. To prove that I'm not making this up, I will reset this and move the color wheels adjustments after the LUT. If I now want to go in here and adjust the signal, you can see how everything moves linearly and the colors stay mostly in place. This means this approach really does not affect how exposure would behave in the real world. Additionally, as we just discussed, we can work between 0 and 100. Let's keep that in mind for a second. If I push the global wheel up, you can see how everything goes beyond 100 and eventually clip. The same is true if I push everything down. It goes below zero and the information gets lost. Let's reset this. If I now go back to the inspector and move the color wheels before the LUT and try the same thing again, you can see how everything stays within legal range. Nothing goes above 100 and nothing goes below zero. Let's reset this and have a closer look at the Luma waveform. As I push the offset up, you can see how the waveform does not respond linearly. If we go to the point right here, you can see how the highlights become squeezed and more squeezed and even more squeezed. The same is true if I push it down. Everything becomes a little bit more squeezed until it eventually gets clipped. This is also what we discussed in the beginning. Different cameras might have different highlight roll-off or treat the image differently in general. When we set up our signal chain in a way that we adjust the image before the LUT, we can let the LUT take care of the actual color science. This then also includes the highlight and shadow roll-off. Let's disable the color space transformation LUT and do one more example. Here I have Dehancer Pro, which is a film emulation plugin. If I enable this, you can see I have loaded my camera, the A7 Mark III, and I chose the proper format in which I recorded, as log3, as gamma3.cine. Again, my color wheels come before Dehancer, so this means I'm adjusting the signal before it hits the actual film emulation plugin. If I now go in here and adjust the offset, 
you can see how the colors become more and more dense, just as film would behave if it was underexposed. Or if I push the signal up, you can see how the colors become lighter, again, just as film would behave if I would overexpose it. Let's reset this and hide the parameters of Dehancer. If I now put my color wheels adjustment after Dehancer and adjust the offset, you can see how none of this happens. Everything behaves linearly, which is very strange, because when adjusting exposure in camera, the image does not behave linearly. Actually, let's keep this little adjustment here and move it over. Did you see the difference it makes? Again, I reset this, after the enhancer or before the enhancer. The image is entirely different. So, okay, let's reset this. As you can see, using the right tool is crucial, but only one part of the equation. Learning your way around the why and when you should do something is just as important, if not more. Let's recap what we learned. Number one, adjusting exposure is only possible in camera. Number two, when shooting log encoded, we can mimic the effects of adjusting exposure in post. Number three, to adjust exposure, we need to use the global wheel because we want to offset the entire video signal. Number four, it is important that our exposure adjustment happens before the color space transformation to Rec. 709, otherwise it will not work. Again, on my website you will find a two hour training on that topic and a free PDF guide, so you can make a real difference in your color grading. Both resources are linked in the video description.